Welcome to Denver Center for Bariatric Surgery at Rose Medical Center in Denver, Colorado. Today we are here to hear an amazing story about a weight loss journey with one of our expert bariatric surgeons and one of his amazing patients who just celebrated her one year anniversary. Hi, I'm Dr. Matt Metz from the Denver Center for Bariatric Surgery and I'm here with Pam, one of my amazing patients who's totally rocking it a year after bariatric surgery. I'm Pam. I had surgery on November 19th of last year, just before Thanksgiving. Um, what kind of surgery did you have? I had the gastric sleeve. Did you have it with me? I did. Yes, very <laughs> good. And did you have any major problems after surgery? Um, actually, I did really well. I did not have to take a lot of pain medication. Um, I did have one little slip up. What was your slip up? I had um, <laughs> kidney stone. Yes. Put me yes. in the hospital. <laughs> yes. So people that lose weight rapidly from any cause can have kidney stones, gallstones, and even uh, what's called crystal uh, uric acid stones, which is crystallized stones in their feet and hands, which is gout. But thankfully, you did not get that. But it was probably as a result of losing weight so fast. I think I lost 20 pounds in two weeks. That's amazing. So wow. It was, wow. It was amazing for me. And how much weight have you lost totally? 93 the last time I checked which was last week so 93 pounds down so when I saw you in the office last was it two weeks ago I think it was three weeks ago three weeks ago. it was in the middle of, of November for your one year and I mean you just I was so ecstatic to see you I mean I saw you and Jim your husband I'm just it was so amazing to see you, you just totally made my day but what's been the biggest change for you oh I wish I could pinpoint just one thing, but the one of my biggest things is my um, grandkids. My granddaughter came up and she hugged me just before they were leaving and she goes, Grandma, I can put my arms all the way around you. Wow. And she just kept hanging on. I think that was that was like one of my my greatest moments. That's incredible. That's incredible. Um Another one of my greatest moments was letting go of my oxygen. Because you had that, that uh, COPD, with, and you, you were starting to get pretty bad with the oxygen before surgery. I was. So Pam and I actually worked together at another institution many years ago, and we used to see each other all the time, and uh, she'd say, you know, is, is it time yet? Like, not yet, Pam, not yet. And we were just, we we're always kind of talking about that moment if whether or not uh, surgery was going to be right for you. What was it that kind of made you make the leap? Um, I want to say it was physically I was getting worse and worse. I was gaining like 20 pounds a year. Yeah. Um, my highest weight was to a little at 280, maybe a little over. Um, wasn't healthy at all. Unable to do things that I wanted to do or um, and then coming in and seeing you was one of my big moments. Yeah, um, Dr. Metz looked at me and said, um, you're going to be lucky if you make it 10 years. Yeah. I and hope I said it nicer than that. You did. I'll be good. <laughs> well, I mean, with the data are very clear. If somebody's struggling with their weight, if somebody's body mass index is over 40, really they only have a 30% a, a chance of living to age 65. I mean, that's terrible. It's way too young. I mean, too young for you. You were, you were suffering with so many medical problems. I mean, not just the lungs, but your joints. Um, you had some, was it some cholesterol problems you were having? Um, no, was it I high actually, blood pressure? I had systemic lupus. Oh, habit. that's right, that's right. Um, so it made it more difficult for me to right. exercise and do the things I wanted to do. So it was um, it was a struggle being on steroids for so long. Yeah, did the steroids contribute to some of your weight gain? It did. Yeah, it did. I found out a lot of, during the, the whole process of actually going into the surgery, I found out a lot more of what actually contributed to me gaining the weight. Some of it was, I was a stress eater, I was also a board eater, and um, working at the hospitals, I wouldn't eat all day and then go home and eat all night. Right. Right. <laughs> and that didn't help, and it was the wrong things. Um, how that's kind of changed now. So what's different? What do you? What's different about your life now aside from the weight loss? Oh, um, so different. We actually go camping, take our kids, our grandkids. Um, we went to like 
seven different places this year, the sand dunes, um, hiking. We went um, Lake McConaughey. I mean, there are so many things that we've, we've done this year alone that I've never even done, and I've been here since I was seven years old. So wow. <laughs> it's like amazing. Um, spending time with my family is, I'm happier. Okay. I'm happier. So did your insurance cover this, cover bariatric, uh, I can't speak English. Did your insurance cover bariatric <laughs> surgery, Pam? It did. Um, the majority of it, I had my deductible that I had to cover, but yes. What did you have to do? Like, what kind of hoops did you have to jump through in order to have surgery? Um, actually, your office jumped through the hoops. Yeah. Um, they were phenomenal. I have never worked with a group of ladies that were so concerned about making sure everything was taken care of. Good. Um, every one of them. Did you have to do the medically supervised weight loss with the dietitian? Mm -hmm. okay. I did. And how many visits did you, just a couple of visits, or did they make you do the six months? I did six months. Six months, okay. Well, that's right, because you weren't with United with uh, with the other place we used to work at anymore. No, right. Or, yes. The place that shall not be named. It's yes. like Voldemort. <laughs> um, and then, um, then you had to do the mental health screen, which is standard for all bariatric uh, surgery. And then... Which was phenomenal, by the way. Yeah? Tell me why. Like, what? Um, I think that's where I kind of started realizing that I was actually eating for the wrong reasons. Gotcha. Had a lot of things that I went through um, younger, a lot of things that I just kept piling on and she was able to help me realize that those were the things I had to work through in order to start eating right and thinking about food differently. Are you still working with any uh, providers or do you still work with like a support group? Is there anything available to you? Uh, I Yes, Rose Medical Center. I. I their group, I can always call. They don't even know that I'm calling in half the time. <laughs> I'm just there. Um, listening to other stories, listening to other other ideas and, and figuring out things that are gonna work for me. Um, it's, it's, it's a journey that I never thought I would have to cross at my age, but I, I'm glad I did. Um, it gave me the best release on life. Today. What, what, what happened today? What was different? Um, I think I, so I'm, I'm kind of realizing my confidence level has increased. Um, I'm better equipped, better, I feel good about me. And that's not something I did. Um, I work in the medical field, as you know and was managing practices and I used to be the girl that sat in the corner hoping no one would see and today I'm the girl that's standing up making those meetings yeah and you're the person that's being broadcast live right now which is pretty exciting <laughs> <laughs> pretty embarrassing a little bit because I'm sitting here tearing up so I'm sorry that's okay I'm, I'm probably gonna tear up as well you know sunsets circumcisions all these things cause me to cry the, the, the curse of being a surgeon um, so what, um, in terms of, um, sort of long-term goals, what's your long-term goal? Oh, I want to help people more, um, understand that they can make this journey. I had gotten so many different comments from providers, from friends, why didn't you do it the regular way? Why didn't you just diet and try to lose it? And we tried everything. I mean, I, I was on the medications. I was trying to do the Jenny Craig, do the Weight Watchers, do those things. And I would lose 10, 15 pounds, and then I would gain double it back. Um, I think I want to be a support for someone else who, I mean, if it just helps one person. You're, I think you're helping a lot of people right now. I mean, we've known each other, I think I met you around 2010, something like that. Yeah. Um, so it, it's it's been a while that we've known each other and has sort of been dancing around this issue. And so many people think mm -hmm. that this is the easy way out. And here you're a perfect example of somebody that's tried everything. And you got these medications and the lupus and the steroids and 
everything was sort of conspiring against you despite the fact that you were doing everything right. So I'm so proud of you. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Well, I couldn't be more grateful to you, to your team, um, to Rose. Well, they thank have you. been, uh, every one of you have been amazing. Of course, you'll always have kind of that special place just because we've worked in other places, but, and Allison. She's amazing. We're so lucky. Uh, so lucky to have her. She, she is like, yeah, I wouldn't trade her. <laughs> good, good. I wouldn't either. Um, a lot of people ask me about excess skin. I hope I'm not asking too much here, but what, uh, any issues with excess skin that you've noticed with all the weight loss? I do have excess skin, and I think... That's my next journey. Um, I actually am going to try to have some skin removal. Okay. Um, because there there are problems that come up with that. You don't feel right in your clothes. You don't feel comfortable. I can't tell you. I feel more comfortable in front of my husband today than I did a year ago. Wow. Um, not that he ever made me feel any different, but, you know, he, he's... He's always said that I was just gorgeous anyway to him. So for me, it's more about making me feel good. Um, making me fit that outfit a little bit better. Sure, sure. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to look into having that. And we talked about that when I was in a couple weeks ago, three weeks ago. One of the great things that you just touched on, on is uh, the fact that Jim has been so supportive and we see, I mean, Jim's been at pretty much every single um, uh, office visit all the time in the hospital. I mean, he was, oh, has always been super supportive, not trying to, uh, to blow smoke in uh, Jim's direction, but we see a lot of couples where they're not as supportive of each other or one person is, is just really not behind the other as much on, on, on this decision and the outcomes are different and when people have great support from their their families and their 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 loved ones they tend to do much much better so i'm just i'm really happy that jim's been a part of this whole process and <laughs> he and literally you, told me no in the beginning he said absolutely not you are not having this done you are out of your mind and i said at least talk to dr metz please and he went and he talked, and he asked questions. I remember that first visit was a bit, little bit like this. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was. We've been, um, you know, for him and my children, they've never had to worry about their weight ever. Um, he's a retired firefighter, works in construction. Um, my kids are all thin. Their metabolisms are high. Um, and I don't, I don't, I'm trying to say this without saying anything, <laughs> without crying. I don't know if anyone knows, I know that my daughters feel like they're too thin, but I always felt like I was never thin enough. And and my husband always told me that I was just perfect. And I never believed him. And today I believe it. Good. Because I feel like I am better. <laughs> um, it's hard. It's hard when you go through those things because you don't know if you're going to... My fear of not being with my grandkids, not being with my kids, not being with my husband. And not feeling good enough to be around them. And those were things that I was trying to tackle it today. I don't feel that way. And I am so grateful. I've had so many blessings over the past year that I just really couldn't ask for too much more. <laughs> I am so proud of you. I'm so honored that you let me be a part of this journey with you, both you and Jim. And I'm just really just ecstatic that you agreed to be here today and, and just tell us your story and tell everyone your story because you're really, you're truly an inspiration. Um, you've inspired me, you've really, you made my day when I saw you a few weeks ago in the office. I mean, I was just, I know I saw you six months ago, but it's just, 
each time you come in and I see how much more confident you are and your eyes are open more <laughs> you're, yeah. you're, 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 you look fantastic and, and your labs reflected how well things are going internally and I'm just so proud of you. Amazing. It has been an amazing journey. Um, not over yet. Nope. Still have some to go. Yeah. Um, it's a continuous process. We're all struggling. I think, I think first coming home from the hospital the 30 cc's of food. Mm -hmm. Everyone kind of looks at you and goes, what? But honestly, you can't, you don't even feel like eating. I mean, we had to set an alarm clock to remind myself to eat. <laughs> um, I think I'm eating right at four to six ounces every couple hours now. Lots of chicken salad. Okay. <laughs> Lots of um, yo uh, natural yogurts and cottage cheese, red meats. Um, but every day it just gets that much easier um, I don't think about it as much I think my husband still makes all my meals before he leaves for work makes it easy on me <laughs> um, he's welcome to drop off a lunchbox at my house on the way it's, <laughs> it's fine I usually it, you know it's like it, the different things are we go out to dinner and I literally have to split his meal he's just like okay, you can have a little bit of this. And it's like, great, so a lot cheaper. Yeah. Financially, it really, it, it took away from the grocery bill. <laughs> Are there any foods that don't agree with you that you, you would, would like to be able to eat? Um, so, I don't want to say that there's foods that I want to eat. I don't have a craving to eat certain foods. I don't, sugars really kind of do me in. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, they really do. i tired, fatigued. The minute I start eating sugar, that's it. Um, any, car any kind of carbonation, I stay away from. Good. Um, in fact, those, I, I accidentally had a little bit of champagne, and um, yeah, that did not go over well. It did not go over well. But um, not a lot of things that I'm missing at all. Um, that was one of the things that my sister-in-law asked me about too. She goes, I think I would miss being able to eat those foods. And I said, I don't miss them. You don't miss them. I, I, I feel like I'm eating better. My skin looks better. My, my um, like you said, my eyes, Yeah. they're brighter. Um, I think I'm just, it's been a journey to get to the year, but I'm doing good. Good for you. And I'm so glad you've taken advantage of the support groups that we have here for you and for, for the rest of our, our patients. They're available by telephone. Um, folks can show up for those. But just to be able to be in your own home and call in, and whether you speak or not, mm -hmm. just to hear what everybody else is saying and all the resources there, I think that's one of the, the real strong, real strengths to this program with us collaborating with uh, the dietitians and mental health. Amazing. Again, like I said, I've called. I never even know that I'm on the phone and just listen to the stories and hear what other people are going through. Um, not everybody has the same outlook. I think I was at the point where after a knee replacement, that was it. I was done knowing that I was getting sicker every yeah. day was a huge point for me and knowing that my grandkids were out playing and I couldn't play with them that was huge knowing that my husband wanted to do things and I was stopping him from doing those things or my kids um, they don't I don't stop them anymore that's incredible they don't stop me either it's <laughs> fantastic so Pam what would you say to people right now who are they're thinking about it but they're afraid to take the plunge what would you say oh Stop thinking. Go see Dr. Metz. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, stop thinking and go see Dr. Metz. Questions, concerns. Um, even if you don't use them, he'll answer your questions. Even if, I mean, I think that that's, that's one thing I can say about Dr. Metz is he's always answered my questions, even when we were sitting behind a reception desk talking about my weight. <laughs> That's right. Um, didn't matter. He was always coaching us, even in, in the cafeteria. 
I'm pretty weak over there. <laughs> non judgmentally. Yes. And we all and we all the nice thing is we all encourage each other. Yes. Well and I think that I think that that's where I would say stop thinking. Just go talk to them. Go talk to them. Because they can help. 